God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Among you, Murray. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we're going to pick up on our sermon series titled The Protestant View of the Sacraments. Our main scriptures, when we started out with the first two sacraments, was Matthew 28 and 19 and Luke. 22 and 19. So we're talking about in our message series the seven sacraments and the first two were baptism and the Lord's Supper. Then we last week we started with reconciliation or repentance and confession. So we're going to pick up on that today. And my beloved, in the New Testament, Christians were admonished to confess your sins to one another and pray for one another at their gatherings. And you can see that in James chapter 5 and verse 16. And to be forgiving people, which is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. But the forgiveness of sins in the gospel of John chapter 20 and verse 23 meant baptism, which was entrusted to the disciples. And evidence in the early church in Acts chapter 5 and verse 31, with God and not the disciples forgiving of sins. So we have where when you're dealing with confession, that in Roman Catholicism, you would go to a priest and he would absolve you of your sins. Now, when we deal with salvation, we're dealing with going to God the Father through Jesus Christ and accepting his plan of salvation which is total salvation through Jesus Christ. The other one is like confessing your daily sins. Now, when you're talking about confessing your sins to one another, we're talking about if you have something against your brother, go to him. If you have, if you talked about your brother or there's something going on between you and somebody else, you're gossiping about someone, or if your brother has offended you and you have been spreading malicious lies about him because you were offended, but you can bring that up in the church. So reconciliation would take place between you, if you're the individual that has been hurt, or if the other individual has been hurt by your gossip or what you have been saying, okay? So, but there is a confession, and the two types of confession are confessing to one another and Confessing to God for repentance for the salvation of your soul. One is to have peace with mankind, but the other one is to have peace with God. And that only comes through Jesus Christ. So, then we have forgiveness, where it, it pertains to different situations in life, in families, in marriages. Now, you don't have to take that to the church. You can reconcile with your children or your spouses. You don't need to get the church involved. Now, when, when there is an impasse, then you have to seek counseling, ministerial counseling, religious counseling, okay? So, know that the most important, as I just said previously, is the repentance and confession of your sins for the salvation of your soul. The other types of confession will not save your soul. Only when you repent of your sins and put your full trust, put your soul in the hands of God through Jesus Christ, through his ultimate sacrifice on the cross, through his crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection. Confessing your sins to a priest or confessing, confessing your sins in a congregational setting with one another will not get you to heaven. It's only when you repent and receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. And make a vow to God to turn from your sin to serve Him through His Son. Because without salvation, there is no forgiveness between you and God. Through confessing your sins to one another, there is forgiveness between you and the person affected, or the person that caused the problem if you were affected. That's the difference. So we have to know the difference. Your salvation which comes through Jesus Christ, and then being baptized, which is a symbol of Christ's death, burial, 
and resurrection. If you receive Christ and are not baptized, you're still forgiven. But you have not declared your salvation through baptism, which is symbolic of Christ's death, burial, and, and resurrection. A lot of people, they don't understand that they should be baptized. So they are never really baptized, but they are saved. So you can be baptized, but if you're not saved, if you don't repent to, to the Father through Jesus Christ, baptism does nothing but get you wet. Let me just reiterate on this. What deals with forgiveness, the most important forgiveness is when you repent to God the Father through Jesus Christ for your sins and you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. The other repentance is forgiveness between you and another individual or another individual and you. Or if you do something to damage the church, if you say something wrong about the church or whatever, like some of the uh, people in the first church were doing, saying things that were bad, spreading false doctrine in the church, committing a sin like uh, adultery in the church, and still going to church. And, you know, they were put out of the church, but then they repented and they came back into the church. Because as I say, one rotten apple thrown in a barrel with other apples would cause the other ones to rot. So you have to get rid of sin in the church. Now let's talk about the early practice of confession. In the middle of the second century, the idea of one reconciliation after baptism for the serious sins of apostasy, murder, adultery, was suggested in the Book of Visions. The Episcopus, or the bishop, was the main liturgical leader in a community. He declared that God had forgiven the sins when it was clear that there was a repentance, evidenced by the performance of some repentance, and the penitent was readmitted to the community. So they had a, a man of the cloth say that you were forgiven, that you had truly repented. Yeah, when you are truly repentant, you don't need a leader of the cloth to tell you that you are forgiven. Salvation is by faith through Jesus Christ. Now, I can tell you that I forgive you, right? If you come to me and say, Pastor, forgive me for something I said. And I would say, yes, I forgive you. But when it comes to salvation, uh, you have to believe by faith because your salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. That what the word says, that you shall be saved. You have to believe that by faith. So it is written in God's word. And when you look at God's word, God is speaking to you. And you don't need to go to ask somebody if, gee, am I really forgiven? You believe the word of God by faith. And then you know that you are truly forgiven by God. If, now, like, if you come down to the altar and you are serious in your heart and you repent, and I know that you're repenting from a sincere heart. I could say, yes, you have been born again. But for you just to come to me and say, I'm sorry, uh, Pastor, or I'm sorry that I said this wrong about you. Forgive me. And I say, yes, that doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Because you only go to heaven through Jesus Christ. And not through me saying, yes, I forgive you. So that means that you're going to heaven. No, that's not the way it is. So, and also since reconciliation with the church could be granted only once after baptism was often postponed until late in life and reconciliation to one's deathbed. That's not right. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. And you don't have to have a priest or minister come to you on your deathbed and say a few prayers and tell you that you're going to heaven without you repenting. Especially when you deal with the sacrament of reconciliation of the dead. Because once you die, you cannot be forgiven. No matter what, no matter how many people pray for you, you cannot be forgiven. You can only be forgiven if you repent in this life, not in a life to come. First death, then the judgment. So, you believe in infant baptism? That doesn't get you to heaven. It gets you into the church proper, that church or that denomination, but it doesn't get you to heaven. Jesus said, those that repent and are baptized, which means make a call to others saying that I am saved and use my testimony for yourself to get you to heaven. That I am saved through Jesus Christ. I am saved through repentance and the forgiveness of my sins. There is a great difference in this. 
in the application of Matthew chapter 28, there is a difference from what some traditions declare. Just let me read, read this again. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's in King James. Good News Bible renders it. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you have to be made a disciple first of all. You must repent first of all to God through Jesus Christ. Without that, the baptism is meaningless. There are people that think that they are saved because they were baptized when they were young or that they were baptized in the Jordan River when they went on a, a vacation to Israel. That's not true. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sins. I don't care what you say of baptism. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sins. I don't care if you had godparents and they said a few words when you were baptized as an infant. It means nothing because your relationship with God the Father is personal through Jesus Christ. I can't repent for you. You can't repent for me. I can't tell you you're forgiven if I'm not there and I know your heart. Now, can I tell you what's in your heart or your mind? No. But if you say you're saved and you go on and there's no change in your lifestyle, you're still living a life of debauchery, drinking, sexual promiscuity and everything, you're not saved. Because when you are truly saved, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. The Holy Spirit leads you, guides you, corrects you, con he convicts you of your sins. And if there is no change in your life, then you're not saved. There has to be a change take place. You cannot live a life of sin, continue to do the same thing you did before. If you're a Christian, it doesn't work that way. Now, a lot of people say, well, he can't be saved if he takes a drink. No, there's nothing in the Bible that says you can't take a drink. Or somebody smokes, is not saved. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about that. But when you live a life of sin and adultery, debauchery, drunkenness, you follow the, the arts, which is uh, the horoscopes and everything else, and put that ahead of what the Word of God says, you have to question your salvation. If you're going around cussing and swearing all day long, there's a problem. That shows you what is in your heart. See, it's not what goes into your mouth, as Jesus was saying, when they said about the apostles using, you know, eating with unwashed hands and all that stuff, or eating certain kinds of food that was against the law. He said, it's what comes out of your mouth that corrupts you, that tells you what is truly in your heart. That's a difference. So, without salvation, baptism doesn't hold any water. I <laughs> put that way. You must repent and be baptized. And you must hear the Word of God. If you don't hear the Word of God, you don't know. So that's why we are to go and teach all nations or preach to all nations and tell them the truth of the Word of God. And those that receive it and are baptized make the declaration of faith, they are saved. But salvation isn't dependent on baptism. You can repent and not be baptized. There's a lot of people that repent and are not baptized. Now, let me say this on behalf of some of the churches, the Roman Catholic Church and some of the other churches, some of the other denominations, which I covered and I will continue to cover, that don't allow you to be baptized after you receive salvation. You see, Roman Catholicism, you are baptized one time as a youth. So if you get saved along the way and you're still going to Catholic Church, well, they're not going to baptize you again. So therefore, you could be saved and not be rebaptized, and you're still saved because it's salvation isn't dependent on baptism. But what Jesus wanted you to do was to declare your salvation through the baptism. And that's what Paul was talking about in Romans. So we need to take this sacrament at what it says. Reconciliation is repentance, either between the person and God or the person and another person. And the only two sacraments that we receive are baptism, which comes after salvation, and celebrating of the Lord's Supper. And that's what Jesus was explicit in the two sacraments. But no one can tell you that you're saved and going to heaven because they don't know what's in your heart. And even when you hear someone re recite some words, 
because they might have some bad feelings about something and they say, well, uh, come down to the altar, altar to pray and you want to see Christ? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, I'll receive Christ, yeah. And they cry for a little bit, then they go out and do this, the same thing. They continue to live the same lifestyle. And you have to wonder about whether they're truly saved or not. But there is growth in salvation. There is growth to repentance in Jesus Christ. That's why the Holy Spirit comes to live within you at salvation. Because he is the one that lets you know where you stand with God. And if you don't listen to him, you're not going to listen to man. But a lot of times, people would rather listen to a man than listen to the Holy Spirit. And that is the problem that is in the church. They think they say a few prayers, and, and that's it. No, it's a lifestyle change. It's yielding to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then you know that you are saved. So, why do we as Protestants have only two sacraments? The short answer is because Jesus commanded his followers to share two sacraments, baptism and communion. That's why we read, you know, in Matthew 20, 19, we read that Jesus tells us to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, what is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? The Holy Trinity. What is the Holy Trinity? God. It's simple. And according to Luke 22, and verse 19, Jesus' final meal lets us know with a command that we are to do that in remembrance of him. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So the word sacrament comes from the Latin, which means an oath or a solemn vow. In the mid-16th century, the Council of Trent defined a sacrament as a visible sign of an invisible grace. It is not that rituals like marriage, confirmation, ordination, etc., lack or that there is no biblical basis for them, but in their zeal to call the church to measure its actions against Jesus. The reformers argue that none of the sacraments apart from baptism and communion were commanded by Christ himself in the Bible. That's why we believe what we believe about the two sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion or the celebrating of the Eucharist. We don't believe that the blood and the bread is turned into the physical body of Christ. We believe that it is a memorial to Jesus Christ, a remembrance of what he did for us. It brings to our memory the crucifixion, you know, Christ's suffering, his death, his burial, and resurrection. That's what it means. So, my beloved, that's what we're going to close for today. But know that repentance or reconciliation, confession, is very important. And we need reconciliation in our life with God through Jesus Christ. We need reconciliation and forgiveness from one another in our daily lives. If we have arguments or disagreements, we need to come together and forgive one another and drop it and go on. Not that you're ever going to forget because you're never going to forget because you have a devil that's going to remind you 24-7. But we can have peace with one another. We can live with one another in peace. We can live with all men in peace. And that's what God wants for us. And if we do, there won't be all these sins. We won't be breaking the Ten Commandments. We won't be killing, stealing, lying, committing adultery, fornication. We won't be doing all these things. So take it seriously. Where there is true repentance, and true repentance brings salvation in your life, you cannot be the same. The minute you receive salvation, your life changes. If your life doesn't change, you need to go back and Look at it again to see if you truly repented. So with that, let me say this. If you have never repented, truly repented, and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you today. This is the most important prayer you will ever pray. You might be praying prayers for everything under the sun, for a job, money, finances, new car, whatever. But the most important prayer you can pray, in truth, by faith, is the prayer of repentance the prayer of salvation, to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. And if you want to do that today, I want to pray with you. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day. If you want to believe that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. And really get in that mindset that you want to repent of all your sins. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, the Protestant view of the sacraments, part three. I want to repent. I don't know if I'm truly saved or not, but I want to make sure today. And I pray this prayer by faith. 
I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came to the earth, he is the Messiah, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day. I believe that today. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Make me new. I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to hell when I die. So I put my total faith and trust in you, Father God, and your plan of salvation. I believe it today. And I now thank you for saving me. I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Savior and Lord. Lead me, guide me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Show me what you have for me to do. Use me to tell others about Jesus Christ and your plan of salvation. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I praise you and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you recited that prayer and you meant it from your heart, because God knows what's in your heart, you have become a Christian. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders, tell them what happened, ask them to pray for you, ask them to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in full immersion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to mentor you and to lead you and guide you to help you to grow. Then what I want you to do is contact me and tell me what happened at Abundant.Grace at ATT.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.AbundantGraceChurch.net or through our other website at www.AbundantGraceOfMidlothian.com. Or you may also just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or Abundant Grace Church. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.